I'm going to be speaking about how Toyota, a Japanese automobile company, broke the Providence Paradox by transitioning into the United States market, which is run by mostly German manufacturers. We are all familiar with the name Toyota, but I wanted to give a little insight on the background of Toyota before I started jumping into things. As I mentioned, Toyota is a Japanese multinational automotive manufacturer. The headquarters is in Toyota, Aichi, Japan. Toyota was founded by Kichiro Toyota on August 28, 1937. As Toyota was a successful company in Japan, they had plans to go global. Toyota was very successful in Japan, but they wanted to make the transition to the United States market. Toyota had goals of breaking the Providence Paradox, which at the moment was German automobile manufacturers who controlled the United States market. These German automobile manufacturers controlled the minds of these U.S. consumers, and these consumers only wanted to purchase the German automobiles because they fell in love with their luxury cars. Besides these German luxury cars, there wasn't much competition in the market at the time. Something that I learned through the course of this year is that marketing and selling products on a global scale can be very challenging. One country where a company sells their product may really love it, but it may not resonate well with consumers in another country, like the United States, for example. Some of the luxurious brands that the German manufacturers dominated the market with was Mercedes, Audi, and BMW. These are very well-known popular brands even nowadays, so this would have been a very difficult challenge for Toyota to persuade the minds of these consumers to purchase their car when these people have never heard of their brand. These roadblocks were more so related to the cultural norm of the U.S. consumers. These challenges weren't economic, political, or technology-based, but more so the standard for people to purchase luxury cars from German manufacturers. It was the idea of persuading these consumers to another brand they have never heard of or may not know anything about to purchase their Japanese manufactured luxury car. After thinking about this a little more, it made me ponder how difficult it is to go globally with the brand. This made me think of the Kamida Saika case study that we read and discussed earlier this year. Kamida is a rice cracker company who is also founded in Japan. They made the transition to Japan but found selling their product difficult at first because of the marketing strategy that they took. It was also difficult for Toyota to make sales at the beginning because they needed to build the trust with the U.S. consumers. No one wants to spend their money and purchase something that doesn't look appealing or they have never heard of, which is the reason that Kamida was not successful in the beginning of their global transition. I will speak about Toyota's very successful marketing strategy later on and which helped boost them to being a leading automobile manufacturer in the world. Toyota knew that these German manufacturers would be a large competition for them. Toyota knew that these German manufacturers had very successful luxury car brands and they wanted to be a part of that because they believed that they could do it better. Toyota wanted to take over the American market for luxury saloon cars. One way that they planned on doing this was by creating a brand extension strategy. In this strategy, they created a brand within a brand, in which a Lexus was made. Toyota Lexus was created to appeal to different market segments. Lexus was still going to be a part of Toyota's brand, but they believed that many people would be attracted to Lexus, which the brand within a brand comes into play. Lexus is a car that has more benefits than the other luxury cars on the market for the same price. This drew a lot of attention from the U.S. consumers because of the fact these consumers were able to purchase a car for the same price as another luxury one, but has many more benefits. Toyota wanted to stand by their extended brand by giving affordable luxury. This is one way that they stood out from the other competition. They were doing everything that these German manufacturers were doing but better by including more features to their cars while keeping the cost down. After doing so, Toyota then had the comp competitive advantage over the German manufacturers. The price of these 
that they displayed for their automobiles and the advertising being displayed, which showed the value of Lexus compared to the competitors. Because of the price that Toyota was pricing their cars at, while including many features, they were able to advertise aggressively. Being able to have an affordable luxury car while offering many benefits is a great selling point. I really like the motto that Toyota would give when speaking about their luxury car, Lexus, which was, more for the same. This will stick in the minds of individuals who are seeking to purchase a car. There are many companies that try to break the Providence paradox and expand to be a global company, but it doesn't work out because of the way that they may have transitioned globally or the consumers in that area were not a fan of their product. Toyota had a set plan in play before they made the decision to break into the American market. This played a large part because they were able to stay on track and be one of the largest automobile manufacturers in the United States. Executives at Toyota would go to factories such as Ford Motor, who was a very successful business to learn of new manufacturing technologies in which they would then implement in their factories later on. Toyota was able to better understand the culture of America very quickly and adjust from their usual culture in Japan. This is one of the reasons how they were able to be so successful. In 2007, Toyota became the world's largest automobile manufacturer by selling more vehicles than America's General Motors. Also, Toyota is the most profitable car manufacturer in the world. They have not only broke the Providence Paradox, but they have set the way for many companies in the world today. This led me into something that I learned over the course of this year, that a strategy to overcome issues of selling on a global scale is to really open your mind to see if the market will work where it is with the product you are selling. This worked very well with Toyota because there are many consumers in the United States that are searching for a luxury automobile. Almost everyone owns a car, and people need to purchase new cars after their other one needs to be replaced.